Welcome to the Narrow Boat of James Bill. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining me. This is leg two of Robin James's epic trip to London. Let's go. Well, I've given her a bit of a polishing. She's kind of, don't think I've ever had her looking so good, to be honest. Ready for London. We can do a bit more tonight because we're only going to get to Ealing today. Um, well, if we can, it's now way later than what we thought it was going to be setting off. I've put my comedy horn there. So it just trails the switch to there, which is fine. And it goes in, so to the electrics covered there. So it doesn't kind of get in the way too much. Uh, we're on walkie talkies again. Got enough windlasses. Uh, got my book just in case. Don't know why I am. Filled up with diesel. This is all looking much nicer now, my stern rail. So yeah, we are good to go. You ready to go? Right, we're off, leg two. Um, we've got, I think, five locks to do, uh, and then we've got the open stretch between Cowley, which is Uxbridge, basically, and Camden. So I think we're gonna to try to get as far as we can, but we wanna stop somewhere kind of half decent. So it might be Ealing Golf Club, which is near Perivale. Rob's got a passenger on board. I'm on my own. Result. Right, Woodhall and Haywards uh, Wharf is just here on the offside. Quite a lot of craft around here. Not the prettiest of places to moor, to be honest. Hence the fact that no one has. So this is our first stretch today. We're doing Copper Mill Lock. It's our first lock just coming into Harefield. And the bit that I'm actually quite interested in uh, around here, I think Blackjacks is going to be quite a pretty spot. Uh, but the main thing I'm interested in is seeing what the HS2 works are, because I think we're going right past here, and I think HS2 has done some stuff to the cut. That's really clever. They started with the bathroom first, and then kind of fitting out around the bathroom. Nice idea, that is. When Rob said uh, it's a bit of a barge graveyard around here, he wasn't wrong. I don't think I've, a, I don't think I've seen anything yet with a window. This is a pipe bridge. By the uh, sheer definition of it, it's uh, pipes which go over the cut. Okay, here's our first lock of the day. This is Copper Mill Lock, uh, which is kind of on the approach to Harefield. There are some navigation notes uh, on the book here, but I know what this patch is. Basically, it's a weir stream coming in on the left-hand side, which really pushes quite a lot of water in, depending on how much rainfall there's been. Fortunately, we haven't had much rain, so I'm not expecting much. But basically, what I've got to do is aim the boat a little bit over that way. The water comes in there, pushes the bow out, and I should line up a bit. Uh, Rob might find it a little bit trickier than I, but as I said, I don't think we're going to have much uh, by way of current today. I filmed quite a bit of this because Carol used to live in Harefield and she knows this patch quite well. There's the Koi Carp Inn, which is quite a nice pub. Canal side moorings, and that takes us through into kind of Harefield proper and then down towards Blackjacks. But just before this bridge here is where the inlet comes in. But looking at it now, I can't see, I can see a tiny little flow, a few bubbles coming through, but not much. So I think we'll be fine today. You'll see here, this is where the water is obviously coming in. Those things hanging down are slalom poles for um, like kayaking and canoeing. But I've seen this current a lot, lot stronger than this. I think we'll be absolutely fine. The only problem is there's loads of grass and weeds and stuff. It's all getting tangled around the prop again. So it's a bit slow going through here, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. It's going to be pretty down here though, really nice. The only problem is, it is really slow navigating. We're on tick over. 
Oh, we've moored it up here by Blackjacks next to this absolutely incredible thatch cottage with that amazing ground. And the good news is I can see a guy eating an ice cream, which means it is open. That is perfect. Blackjack's lock, number 85. No, I've got a top on actually. Cafe, open. Just waiting for the lock to fill here. Look at this little selection. Got an ice cream, mandatory for holiday. Look at this. What a beautiful place. That's what I call service. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Right, Rob, do my gate, really. I'm just going to sit here and have my latte. Don't lose the gate No, you can do those as well. Cruising along with a latte. It's going to only mean one thing. Slow control is on the slow control. Got one. They've already come out. Give them a couple of more months. They'll be good as gold. Right, let's crack on. The lock is just ahead of us, and I'm beginning to see now why they call this wide water lock. Amazing. Once again, a beautiful weekend and no boats moving around. I just can't believe how quiet it is. Once again, there's more massive piles of cut vegetation that people have taken out from the lock here. There's so much of that around here. This is what gets caught around the props, it's awful. Piles of this stuff just everywhere in the summer. Right, here we are at lock 86, wide water lock. This is our second lock of the day, and Rob has already lost a witness. What a fool. <laughs> Side of that overgrowth over there is Harefield Marina. Now we've got the long straight boring bit between Harefield and uh, Denham Deep Lock. Towards Denham Deep Lock, you go into Denham Country Park, which is very nice, by the Buckinghamshire Golf Club. Um, so that's all pretty fancy, but um, I think the bit between here and there, there might be some HS2 works, so that'd be interesting. Pretty much wherever you look now, there are cranes. This is HS2, there's a long line of them going all the way from over there, stretching across here. I read somewhere recently that HS2's crane rental bill comes in at 11 million pounds a month. I think it's about 100 million quid a year on crane rental. Someone somewhere is making a pretty penny out of this. Approaching Denham Deep Lock. Uh, there's a boat below that lock. I've just beat my horn to uh, make them know that we're here because for water conservation, we're not going to want to. Um, well, we should let us come down with a full lock of water. I can't see any paddles open at the front, so um, I'm hoping we'll be able to get this done. Speed us up as well. Here we are at Denham Deep. There's boats coming up. This is the deepest lock on the Grand Union at 11 foot, one inch drop for us. Fortunately, we haven't got time to stop. 
but we've got a few people on board to help or on hand to help which is rather useful right let's descend the lowest lock on the Grand Union I haven't done locking like this in a while where I'm just using the gears to uh, stay in position it's going down quite nicely miles away from the sill obviously with a massive lock there's a lot of water change but in fairness all the water is leaving it's when it's filling it's when it's kind of a bit more turbulent well, I'm still going down actually I think we've still got quite a long way to go I'm quite low down already is some exposed sill. Right, there we go. Denim Deep Lock. That is some lock gate, that is. Look at that. Crikey. Right, let's go. Right, I'm going to pull over here and make myself a bite to eat, I'm starving, and I think uh, Rob's passenger is about to disembark and walk back to Harefield. Slows. Scratching the side of my boat. Right, that was a quick pit stop for lunch. A couple of sandwiches and half a melon. Now we are off again because there's a load of boats coming down through Denham so we just want to get through the next lock which is Uxbridge. We've got two more locks to go now. Just coming to the outskirts now of Denham Country Park and the bridge straight ahead of us. Bridge 184, so not the one I'm going under now, but the one just ahead that takes the 840 into West London. So that is the road from Birmingham to London. Serafina coming underneath the A40, looking good, looking very good. This bit of Uxbridge here, we're really low now, now we're down below Denham. There's lots of inlets of water which create these kind of islands and obviously there's houses everywhere. I'm going dead slow now through Uxbridge here, not just because there's more boats everywhere, but because of all this grass and weed, um, it kind of, well, the slower you go, the less water there is being pushed over the prop. There's the winding hole just above Uxbridge Lock. And there's Uxbridge Lock in the town centre. Oh, this is really challenging. There is a five guys about three minute walk from here somehow I'm gonna to have to stop myself running up there and getting a milkshake but that is really what I want to do there's quite a lot of debris in the cut here so I just avoid all this tuck myself in and set the lock for Rob and I oh there's a boat in front of this wide beam so there's not gonna be much space for Rob I'll radio through and inform him Right, this is our penultimate lock of the day. On one of the last videos, I showed us basically bowing both boats up to the lock there. I mean, it's okay to do, but the reason you don't really do it is because when you open the 
when you come to fill the lock, it draws all the water in and the boat basically bashes against the closed lock gates, which if it doesn't move there much, but you know, over years and years of hundreds of boats hitting it, it will loosen the gate. So that's why you're not meant to do it. That's why you're meant to use those. Naughty boy, Rob. See, that's the other problem. You open the door and your kind of boat's in the way. This for Arthur. Come on. Yes. Oh, sorry. Didn't I tell you we're racing? Even though that plastic boat could potentially fit in here, it's just too risky. Our steel boats were crushing, so they have to wait. But there's only one lock to go, so it'll be all right. The end of these lock gates, the balance beams are really heavy. Obviously, they haven't got the, the length, so they had to put some extra weight on it and cut the bridge away. Huh. Okay, okay, quite a strong current coming in here on the weir. So the idea is a bit of power as you go through it. Aim in, and that'll push us round. boats around so I've just got to be a bit careful here but power is what you need to get through it. They cut the power there so I don't start pulling in John Dory and lifeboat too. Hello mate. How you doing? You alright? Yeah good. What's your name? Dave, right? Dave and Sarah. Dave and Sarah, right. Okay, that is Denham Yacht Station there. Now we just got the stretch through Uxbridge down to Cowley Lock, which is the last lock before central London. But well, it's just dead. There's no one there's no one using the cart. I think I've seen three boats. It's really surprising. Surely. These are the kind of days that you want to be out and about. Well, we're loving it anyway. Not far now to Cowley Lock. But that'll be us for hard work for the day, hopefully. Quite mossy again in here. We don't like all this. But amazingly, the water is so clear. I know the cut up in Berkhamstead is actually notoriously quite dirty and rubbish water. And surprisingly, the closer you get to London, actually, the nicer the water seems to be. There's a guy we saw up in Harefield that says for the last 30 years, he's been swimming every day in the cut at the bottom of his garden. In fairness, he was from the Southern Hemisphere. They kind of do stuff like that, don't they? Us Brits would, would dare a bit, but... Oh right, here's the Uxbridge Boat Centre, right, okay. Uh, slow Patrol with Seraphine, had your copy? I'm going to pull in here and get some uh, Craftsmaster paint. You are right, you can go ahead if you want to set up the next lock. Sweet, see in a sec. Right, it's nearly half four. The guys just told me that the chandlery's still open, so I've just got to find somewhere to stop. I don't really know how to, how best to do this. I could tie up to that and just walk round. I don't think I can get round that other way. Yeah, I'll do that. There's a slip there. I don't really want to beach the boat there. moored up here by the Uxbridge Boat Centre, which is exactly what I wanted to be doing. I thought we'd be here about three hours earlier though, but there you go, that's fine. I need to get myself the cream, because one of my jobs I could do tonight, oh, and a brush, but one of the jobs I could do tonight is update all the cream around the stern. This is not the easiest though of 
uh, arrival platforms. I don't think I'm going to be here at all. Cool, look at this place. I'm wearing sandals today, so to try to get rid of my white foot syndrome. Right, where do we go? Through here. This place is uh, like stepping back in time. This shop is like proper Victorian. Check out this building here. Annoyingly, they didn't have the Craftmaster creamy white, so uh, don't attack me. All right, all right, chill out, Jesus Christ. Um, so, I, anyway, I, I felt awful out to buy something, so I took the effort of mooring up here. So, I got those two my grills covers for the uh, mushroom vents in the kitchen. Sorry, galley. And uh, the dinette. So at the moment, oh, I've got these holes, and the kids keep like putting their fingers in them, looking at the cobwebs, and screaming at the spiders. So yeah, that hole there can be covered, and that one there. Nice. I might lose the bag and get an insect mesh thing. So uh, or a pair of tights. Oh dear. Right, there's a boat coming through. Typical, I think it's the third boat I've passed the whole day. Maybe even actually the second. It has to be where it's all narrow going through a bridge. But Rob went first, then this guy, I've hung back. And then I'll go. And I think I can just see the lock at the end. We've probably got four, maybe even five hours left of cruising. It's now about five o'clock. It's baking out here still. It's like 28 degrees, so it's beautiful cruising conditions. surprise though. Look at that. Oh, I know this pub. The bolt shovel. Look at that. What a spot. Right, straight into this lock. Rob's got to do his own gates, but I've got this guy, Biagio. What up, mate? Cheers, pal. Huh? Okay, mate, cheers. Thank you, Biagio. Cheers for your help, pal. Right, next stop, Camden. Well, next lock is Camden. Next stop will be Ealing. Let's go. Well, that's it. That was Cowley Lock back there. And the next lock is uh, Camden Town, which feels really weird. It definitely feels like it's got a different vibe down here now. But, uh, so basically, we just got to go as far as we can. There's obviously loads of light left.
Right, we've pulled over. It's about half six or something now. We're nowhere near where we need to get to. We need to get to Ealing, basically, or Perivale. I think we're still in, well, we're not even in Hayes yet. But we've pulled over some, for some tea. So I've told Rob to make tea, and I'm going to make tea. And I don't think he's expecting what's going to happen. Right, let's see what we've got. So, here's my fresh melon. Clotted cream. Check. What's the other things I need? Um, jam. Where's the jam? Scones. And jam. Oh, I'm going to have loads of people saying, how do you pronounce scones? Scones. Strawberry jam. Here we go. Result. It's fair to say that the ambassador likes things done a particular way. So uh, here we go. Bring on the debate or what you put on first. Right, we are making our way through Hayes Town and ahead of me is Bridge 200. Okay, Bridge 200C, Nestle's Bridge. We are right by the Nestle factory. It is really obscured, the entrance to that canal, but that is it. The Paddington Arm. So the plan's going to be go nice and wide and let the momentum of the boat kind of carry me round, take, make the turn. This is bridge 21. So the bridge numbers now go down from 21 down to one. And one is uh, in uh, Bishop's Bridge in Paddington. So 21, lock, 21 bridges, more to go. Here's Serafina, all 70 foot of her. See if he uses the bow thrusters. I bet he doesn't. Oh, that's close. Nicely done, Rob. I bet that looks pretty small coming from that direction. Okay, we are on the Paddington Arm. Now we've just got to get as far as we can. It's like that American cop show, Chips. Just at two miles an hour.
you can smell the food around here is amazing. This is the heart of Southall, that Southall High Road going up there. But we haven't got time to stop, we've got to crack on. About three miles left to go. So, at two miles an hour, I reckon we've got about an hour and a half left until our destination. It's eight o'clock now, half nine. That should be, should be okay, just enough light left. I might need to put my navigation lights on for Rob. Well, he might just put one on for the time being. Ouch! Looks like a boat's taken the side of that off. You can never have enough insulation. slowly, very slowly, approach Northolf. This was one of the positions that we were contemplating in taking an overnight mooring. Just in there is Willow Tree Marina. They've got a, little, a restaurant and um, small chandlery and things. It's quite nice in there. They haven't got any residential stuff, it's only pier de terres and leisure moorings. Yeah, it looks like a nice spot actually. Lock and Key, the pub school. Blimey, that is busy. Well, we are pushing on through Northolt towards Perivale. idea of my stern whilst navigating. There's Rob emerging from underneath the A40. What the heck is going on around there? If I didn't have a lister pumping away, you'd be able to hear it. I think they're praying. Paddington, eight miles. Perivale, two miles. Oh, goodness. I spoke to someone a while ago up in Apsley who said they love cruising at night. 
I can really see what they mean. Going through this bridge here, I can see the water lines easily. a long cruise it was really interesting uh really enjoyable but yeah just damn long but um ended up basically having a spag bowl for dinner which i made a couple of days ago just in case this exact situation occurred um rob crashed out i put this video together it's now two in the morning but there's still quite a lot going on around here the guy in that boat over there is well into his drum and bass, so uh, that's great news. Uh, but I'm going to uh, call it a night. But leg two has been absolutely brilliant, and this was this was going to be the long, hard stint. You know, this was the the, you know, the the tough day. So tomorrow, I think we've got about six or seven miles until we get to Little Venice. So kind of three hours cruising should be there. Really looking forward to it. See you then. Bye bye.